It's been two years since Myanmar's military shocked the world by ousting the elected civilian government of Aung San Suu Kyi. Army chief Min Aung Lai and his generals have struggled to gain legitimacy, both at home and abroad. Sporadic street protests have progressed to a more organized resistance, with ethnic militia drawn in, bringing the conflict and strife to the country's borders. The military is believed to be resorting to brutal tactics and atrocities to crack down on dissenting communities. The impact has been profound. More than 2,500 dead, over 13,000 detained. More than a million displaced. The increasing diplomatic isolation and fallout from the faltering economy forcing millions more into poverty and hardship. The military justified its takeover by claiming widespread fraud in the 2020 polls. It has promised to hold a general election by August this year. But there's doubt whether that will happen, as the military says conditions have not yet returned to normal. Earlier, we spoke to Jo Mo Tun, who is Myanmar's permanent representative to the United Nations. He also expressed skepticism about the upcoming general elections. Speaking to Will Denslow, he urged the international community to press the military to end the violence in the country, while calling on current ASEAN chair, Indonesia, to engage with all relevant stakeholders. Killing, arresting, the area bombings, even there are muscles. Uh, in, uh, across the the, 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 uh, the country, so we need to stop them. So we really urge the international community to help us. But until now, we haven't had any kind of decisive action from the international community, in particular the UN. Even though UN Security Council adopted a resolution, but it is very mild. Talking of that UN resolution in December, calling for an immediate end to the violence, what is your reaction to that kind of step taken by the Security Council? Is that enough? We urge the, all the relevant stakeholders to implement the, all the provisions contained in the uh, resolution. We also urge the international community to make it happen, for example, end of the violence, for example, immediate release of the, uh, all the political prisoners, including uh, State Councillor Do Aung San Suu Kyi. Ambassador, can you elaborate on what was taken out of the original draft that you wanted to see included? It contained like, languages like if there is no, imp uh, no implementation of the resolution, they were considered to take action under the Chapter 7. And then also, <coughs> they also asked for the, uh, you know, the uh, uh, M's embargoes against the military. So these kind of things are what we like to see. Talking of decisive action, Human Rights Watch said after this vote, after three members of the Security Council abstained in the vote, 12 in favour, three abstentions, that the likes of China and Russia had lost interest in sticking their necks out, as they put it, for the country's military. What's your reaction to those abstentions? Is that a sign that there might be progress and might be momentum shifting for the Security Council to act more decisively in the future? It is very clear that they are not with the military 100%. So that is the good sign for the people of Myanmar. So we, at this, at, at this time, at taking this opportunity, I really like to urge uh, those countries, China and Russia, to listen to the people of Myanmar. We need help from the, all, all countries, whether it's near, near or far, but, but especially those who are our neighbours. We need help from the, our neighbouring countries. So that is why you know, we keep urging them to listen to the people, uh, pay attention to the aspiration of the people of Myanmar, who are longing for a, a, a restoration of democracy, who are longing for a building a federal democrat, a democratic union. Well, talking of neighbouring nations, obviously Indonesia is the new chair of ASEAN, is there renewed hope about what that could mean for implementing the five-point consensus going forward? Of course, we still need to wait and see how the Indonesia will take, take 
take, uh, to address the issue, but uh, the, the way that they made the announcement, like for example, uh, they are ready to engage with all relevant stakeholders, that is very encouraging for us. That is why we always keep keep telling that everyone that please engage with everyone because when you engage with everyone you will you will you will understand better you will know better and then that's the way you can find a solution there's another anniversary that's upcoming that is the escalation of um, the war in Ukraine over the past year has it become more of a challenge to garner cooperation attention from the international community to shine that spotlight back on Myanmar considering how so much focus from the world has been focused on what's developed in Ukraine in the past year. We, we encourage them to keep on pay attention to it but at the same time we keep telling don't forget Myanmar. So, so, so we like to make you, uh, use of whatever attention that the Ukraine people have but at the same time, the international community uh, uh, hope that they will not forget uh, uh, people of Myanmar. They will put more attention to the people of Myanmar. And we're expecting elections in the country, in Myanmar, later this year, in August. Do you have any hopes, expectations that the situation might change off the back of those elections? The military is very clear they don't have any kind of legal authority. They are illegal, they are illegitimate. So whatever the election they were going to organize, definitely people, people will not accept it. So that is why we always say that this election that they're going to organize is sham election. It is very clear that they're trying to make the deception uh, 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 on the people.